Hello everybody. I've been asked loads of times how to create a PHP websites, login systems, registrations, how to set up accounts, tables, databases, everything, literally. So I decided to create a, this small series of tutorials, I suppose, for PHP programming or creating websites in general. So this is the first part. Uh, we're going to start by signing, signing up for the account. Usually for my websites, if if it's not like a huge website or important, like too important, I use a free hosting called 000 webhost. I think it's called 000 webhost.com. Well, anyway, I'll I'll put the link in the description. Uh, so yeah, let's start right ahead by launching your browser, then going 000 yeah, webhost.com as you can see. I have an account with them already. It's free to sign up, so I'm just gonna uh, log in to save time. Now, after you sign up for the account, you'll be given basically this I don't know form, and this is gonna list all your current accounts. As you can see, many of mine are already cancelled because they're that they're not used. I think it's if if there's no visits or calls to your website for about three months or two months. It gets cancelled for inactivity. As you can see, I have five accounts cancelled and one active because this is my Android app I used. Uh, basically, I use this website for my Android app and still being used. So, as you can see, it's still active. So, yeah, anyway, to create a new website, you just uh, under manage another domain, you just click create new. Go ahead. Now, I want to host my own domain. Uh, no. Unless you purchased a domain name from, I don't know, GoDaddy or 123.org or something, like all those domain sellers, you just go for, I'll, I'll choose a free subdomain. So, here you can just come up with uh, your own name for subdomain. So, let's go ahead and name it tutorial part, yeah, password. Um, okay. Okay. So it needs to be, the password needs to be at least six characters and must contain numbers and letters. So you need to mix. Um, okay. Okay, that's fine. Oh, shit, I gave out my password. Anyway, so as you can see, we got a new account now. It's going to be hosted on this website. So to access your website, you have to go at this link. Uh, this is your username for accessing MySQL, FTP, all that, and your password. So go back to the account list. Now we have to wait a bit for the website to build. It's currently building on the servers of webhost. So just click refresh that's active, that's done. So go to CP panel. Now when you start developing websites, you won't really be using CP panel much. You'll only be using for first few I suppose times to get your FTP set up and MySQL database. So let's test an FTP connection. So let's click on View FTP details. And here are your FTP details. Now, in in order to connect to FTP, you need to use FileZilla or um, can't remember the other client. There's loads of them. There's even an online FTP client, which I'm going to list uh, link in description. Which basically allows you to connect to your FTP through web browser, which I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend using FileZilla anyway. So let's copy the details. So host name. This is the address where we're connecting. So this goes here. Then username. Make sure to get all these right because if something is not right, it's not going to let you connect. Okay, quick connect. And we're connected. So FTP setup, everything's working fine. We can close this for now. Now go back. Um, MySQL. Yeah, I'm just gonna explain in this tutorial a bit what some of these mean. The most important part. So um, let's see. Subdomain. Subdomains allows you to manage, basically. Uh, one second. So you see how you have this part, this 
address basically subdomains allows you to create even longer domains for specific how would you say this uh, for specific purposes I suppose so if you go in here you could create for example I don't know um, files dot tutorial parts dot site 88 dot net and it's gonna create a subfolder in your FTP I'm gonna show you like for demo purposes Um, didn't create for some reason. Anyway, yeah, you actually need to create a folder yourself. So now, basically, when we create in public FTP, we create a new folder called files. File exists. Oh, it did exist. I just need to refresh my cache. So, anyway, files. And now, whatever you put into this folder, like HTML side, uh, HTML pages, PHP pages, uh, files, I mean, CSS files, JavaScript, pictures, images, whatever. In order to access it, you'll have to go through this subdomain. That's how it works. So, for example, if you, if you want to have a website which has files, pictures, and... I don't know, videos for example, you just create new subdomains. So you have videos.website, files.website, pictures.website, and so far. That's called subdomains. Generally, I've never used them much because I had no use for them, but right now I'm actually working on a project which requires me to use them. Anyway, uh, manage email accounts. So this basically allows you to create um, email accounts on your hosting so if you go to e manage email accounts you can create your own emails and use this email to send for example admin messages emails like admin emails confirmation emails uh, reminders subscription letters and stuff like that so instead of using your own personal email like I don't know Gmail Hotmail whatever you you can like create your own like more professional looking even though with this website, it's not going to look too professional, but anyway, you get the idea, hopefully. Then, uh, if, if you forget your FTP details, you can always go here, and it's going to show you all your details. File manager and another file manager. I don't know what's, what's the difference between them, but I never use them. This is basically if, for example, you're in college, or at work, or something, and you don't have FTP port available, which is, I think, port 21, or 22, I'm not sure, could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure it's 21. So if the port is blocked and you cannot launch FileZilla or anything, any other FTP client, you use File Manager, which is pretty shit to be honest. Okay. As you can see, Basic Manager. So we refresh, log out, move, delete, rename, and set permissions. So if you click on this, uh, edit, as you can see, you can edit um, FTP file straight from file manager, but there's no syntax correction, uh, I mean syntax highlighting or anything, code press. Oh, there actually is, yeah. Uh, that's probably because I haven't used this ma file manager for the past few years, so now they have obviously updated it, so now you actually have some syntax uh, Highlighting. Let's just see if it works. Um, yeah, it's not really that good, as you can see. It, it it doesn't exactly show you what's the problem, and I think I think it's actually just yeah, it's just actually showing you instead of checking for code, it's checking for English spelling for some reason. So. If I can, if I click a uh, right click, as you can see, it's checking for proper English spelling instead of syntaxing. So I'm still not gonna be using it. Screw that. I prefer FTP all the way. I've been using uh, FileZilla for the past few years and uh, never had a problem. Anyway, let's go ahead. Backups allows you to backup your website. Uh, MySQL. This allows you to create databases. So 
you enter your database name, uh, username for database, password, but yeah, password again, and you have database traced. I'll go to I'll go through this later in the next tutorial. So no rush now. Uh, PHP my admin allows you to log in into database and manage it, having like user interface. If you're not too, too good with uh, SQL language, so if you use this. Uh, what else we need to learn? Um, let's see. Activity log. It it can be used. Uh, it can be useful sometimes if you're getting constant like warnings about bandwidth usage or I don't know CPU usage on your server or hosting website. Basically, you can check activity log and it's gonna show you what's going on. Like like all the errors, problems. I don't know. You can check it out yourself, like if you want. As you can see, disk usage, okay, for now. It's gonna show you, record all the problems, like the uh, major problems, basically. Here you can block uh, people from like specific IP address from connecting to you, to your website, like. So if somebody, I don't know, did something bad on your website, you can block them using IP Deny Manager. So you just go in. IP to deny. So, for example, like here, here are a few examples. So, yeah, you can read through them yourself. I, I've never used this because I never had problems with people. Fuck to fucking open my website. Uh, redirects. It allows you to redirect your domain name to some other website. So, if somebody visits this website, it can be redirected to somewhere else, like I don't know, Google.com, YouTube your YouTube channel, whatever you named, you can test it out yourself. And finally, yeah, that's pretty much the most important parts you'll be using, so, and this is just like general information about your website, so disk usage, this is your hard drive, so you have one and a half gigabytes of space, which is pretty good, considering it's a free, free account, bandwidth is per month, so 100 gigabytes download and upload, per month, which is also very good for free hosting. This is your server name, which you don't really need to know that much. Uh, root directory, IP address, uh, Apache version, PHP version, MySQL version, when you when it was activated and status, so you can actually stop it or activate and plan upgrade if you want. Um, it's actually like, I was considering paying for premium hosting before because it's pretty cheap, it's $5 a month and you get, as they claim, unlimited disk space, unlimited data tra transfer, literally everything unlimited, but I'm pretty sure there's a catch behind this because it can't be that cheap and everything unlimited. So yeah, that's probably, that's it probably for the first tutorial. Uh, so we went through signing up for account, creating an account, testing FTP and basic uh, cPanel. So yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial.